on occasions it can be difficult to find an easy solution to a problem, which is always preferable. I received a call from a storage company that the door that led to the flat roof had been blown off in a recent storm. Their main worry was the damage that could be caused by further weather conditions to any stock inside. My quotation work is free when I can, but obviously done between my paid work. The first chance I got I arrived at the company to view the damage. Just as they described, the door had been blown to pieces. Only one hinge remained to hold on to one of the styles of the door. Naturally it wasn't a case of repair, but a replacement. To get access to the flat roof, it was made by climbing a ladder, then through a small opening. Straight away it was apparent that a new door would never fit through the small opening. On closer inspection of the damaged door, it was found to have been designed as an interior door. It was made from chipboard, and I suspect the person who fitted it would have had to assemble it on the flat roof too. So I decided to do the same, but build a solid wood exterior door. So I took some measurements. Over the past couple of years, I've been using a program called SketchUp, a CAD or computer aided design program. I'm not an expert, but using just basic skills, it's amazing on what you can achieve. It also cuts out measurement errors and you can even plan a cutting list. The first thing after starting the program is to delete the little lady. It's only there to give you some idea of perspective. Next I like to work in millimetres so this was the next step. My first thoughts is just using standard 150mm tantalised timber. This is treated timber under pressurised conditions. This is purchased in all different lengths, so I chose 1.8 metres. I created my first 150mm by 1800mm board. Measurements is not too critical at this stage, so I drew an oblong shape. Now I can enter the size at this point, so 150, 1800. Now we can zoom into our image. This is only a two dimensional image. We can see this by rotating it, so that it only has height and width. To give it its third dimension, we use the push pull tool to create the third dimension or thickness. And I adjusted this to 22mm. Again, if we look around it, we can see it is now 3D. Next is to turn this into a component. This basically means all the measurements will remain the same and we can move this item without it being distorted. The entrance to the flat roof was about 760 millimeters, so this was copied, joined to the previous one, then dragged a copy to the next position. So using five boards we have 750mm and the entrance is about 760mm. So we need a further board, then measure where approximately 760 is. This has left a mark, similar to when we measure a mark off with a pencil. Now to make this board unique. This means that when we alter the size, it will not affect the other boards. Here we can see we have entered the component and using the push-pull tools, we can reduce the size. This means that the last board will only have to be 10 or 11 millimeters wide. And as we can see, this looks unsightly and will be prone to damage being so small. Let's delete this and try something else. We shall add a further board, so now we have 6, and 6 into 761 is about 127 millimeters. Changing just one board will cause all the others to change. We mark off 127 millimeters. Here we can see it's left a mark. Using the push-pull tools, we can reduce this to 127 and all the other boards will follow. 
Now to join all the boards back up and measure them again. We are slightly over our size by a couple of mil. Next we need to deal with the height which is 1540 millimeters. Once again we only have to alter any one of the boards and they will all change to the same size. We enter one of our components, measure 1540 mil, then using the push pull reduce the height. Here is our door. In our CAD system it stands perfect but in reality the boards will just fall apart so next we need to make a top middle and bottom style. So we use the shape tool and draw out a two dimensional object. Size it. Once again it has no depth or thickness so we pull this out to 22mm and then make a component. Next we shall copy this for the bottom style. We can find that the midpoint using the pencil tool, if we mark off from the bottom and when the message mid appears, we move the pencil over to the right. We now copy the bottom style, but this time we move it using the center points of the style. Once this line is aligned with our pencil mark, it locks into position. In its present condition, it would probably be strong enough to hang. But the weather on the top roof does tend to be more severe, so we shall add some side styles. First the shape tool, then drag it out to 22mm, then make a component. Copy this over to the right hand side. Copy again the lower part of the door. We can now see how it's shaping up, but to give it even more and better strength, with just a little bit more effort, we shall add two more styles, but at an angle. Diagonally we can see a measurement of about 740mm, so we shall create a board much larger than this. Add a third dimension of 22mm and turn this into a component. Anchoring the centre of the edge of this board as shown, then using the rotate tool, change the rotation. Naturally we now have to shape this board, so using the pencil tool we can mark off the area. Now the shape has been drawn out, the access needs to be removed. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, since we need to mark off the components on all four sides. First we extend the existing pencil marks around the edges, then join them on the other face side. We can now delete all access bits and then we can reposition it. Our pencil marks removed and the diagonal styles copied to the lower part of the door. Finally we can fill the image with various materials in our example, it's wood grain.